Hi, my name is Marion Horton, and I am the assistant principal at Turner Elementary School in Washington, D.C. Today, I'm going to share with you some tips on holding academic partnering meetings in a distance learning environment. First, what is academic partnering? Flamboyant defines academic partnering as teachers working in partnership with families for the academic and socio-emotional success of students. Academic partnering equips families with the information, resources, and relationships they need to play the five roles. Family engagement is a key ingredient to effective distance learning. For many, this time strengthened the home school relationship and demystified some of the challenges on both sides. In that case, the result has been meaningful relationships and shared power. Educators meeting families and students where they are. At my school, for example, attendance for academic partnering meetings was up this fall, and teachers have innovated in a variety of ways to make sure students and families have what they need. In other cases, though, relationships are strained, and a light has been shined on the gaps in real family engagement such as the complexities of engaging in a virtual learning environment and building authentic relationships. Families are stretched in being able to support learning while working. And this is especially true for families where parents are not able to work from home or have high demands on their time. What's true in every case is that this has been an exceedingly difficult time for students, teachers, and families. Flambling on spoke to teachers, families, and leaders about what worked when it came to academic partnering in fall 2020. In this video, I'll share what leaders should do to make sure academic partnering is successful, tips for using online platforms to schedule conferences, and finally, ideas for academic partnering content in a virtual setting. All of this and more can be found in the Academic Partnering Toolkit for Teachers and Leader Companion Guide, available at flamboyantfoundation.org. First, let me talk to my leaders. What are the must-dos to make sure academic partnering is successful? First, communicate with stakeholders early and clearly. This includes families, but also all school staff. Don't forget deans, mental health professionals, front office staff, special subject teachers, and so on. Make sure they're clear about relevant timelines, due dates, expectations about the content of academic partnering. Then get feedback on the timeline, expectations from staff early early enough to adjust as needed. Teachers are in communications with families on the daily. They might have flags about what you shared. So make sure they have time to share those and for you to adjust as needed. Then once conferences are over, gather feedback from families and staff to inform planning for the next round of academic partnering. Now let's talk about attendance. We know it's essential that all families have the opportunity, opportunity to academically partner with their student's teacher. At my school, we've done away with drop-in conferences and instead opted for one-on-one -on -one meetings. We schedule them to find a mutually agreeable time between families and educators. This is an important step towards shared power during academic partnering. When academic partnering is virtual, we use sign-up platforms. It is the way to go. On the screen, you can see example platforms used by Flamboyant Partner Schools. Platforms like PTC Fast even have a toggle for families to sign up in their preferred language. You can promote the conferences via robocalls, the school website or social media, personal calls to families, and of course, the students. Leaders, this is a part you should, ex you should set expectations for. 
and lend support on. At another DC school that saw increased attendance to, due to academic partnering, in the fall, families shared feedback that doing academic partnering virtually made it even easier to participate. It's an option I hope we can bring with us as schools return to in-person learning. Finally, how do we make content meaningful during distance learning? Remember that the data and resources you share should empower families to play the five roles. Ask yourself, how does this help families to monitor their child's learning or communicate high expectations? One, one flamboyant partner school focused on sharing non-tech activities to give younger learners and off-screen learning ideas. Getting input from families about what they want before conferences is a way to know if this is the right approach for you and your school. That said, technological access and savvy varies widely across families and it is essential that schools consider all the steps needed to deeply engage families in the academic success of their children especially families that have limited tech proficiency or challenges with tech access. Next, be sure to include social emotional skills into conferences. This could include helping families identify the signs of anxiety in children, letting students reflect on the 21st century skills they gain while learning at home, or tips for setting up an at-home learning environment. And finally, if depart if departmentalized classes, excuse me, and finally, if you're in departmentalized classes, make sure in grade level teams to discuss the student work samples you'll be highlighting or data you'll be sharing. Leaders, this is another place to lean in. While I've shared in this video um, tips from Flamboyant Partner Schools during COVID-19 pandemic, I really think they can apply any time teachers are connecting with families to have an academic partnering meeting. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions about what was shared in this video, reach out to product at flamboyantfoundation.org. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the Academic Partnering Toolkit and Academic Partnering Companion Guide. Stay safe.